Senior High School On Air Academy. Unstoppable! Delivering you quality education amidst pandemic. To be fair, school opening to October 5. Unstoppable! Giving you accessible learning platform anytime, anywhere. Whatever form it is. Comprehensible! Pop it up and get yourself ready. I will repeat, and you will do it later on. Accurate! The sphere that includes all living things. Today, we will be talking about rational functions. Simplify! This is Jaw speaking. How may I help you? This is ZFX School Radio's Senior High School On Air On Air Academy And now, here's your new episode for Ben and Pages Your guide for the subject Reading and Writing Skills Ben and Pages Ben and Pages The capacity to learn is a gift the ability to learn is a skill, and the willingness to learn is a choice. A blissful day, grade 11 learners! I am grateful that you have chosen to learn with me today in our reading and writing episode here at your favorite radio station, Radio Escuela Sa Isabella. I am your radio teacher, Teacher Emma Luisa Fernando. Yay! your guide for today's lesson. Let's start! Alright! To begin, let's recall our previous lesson. Do you remember the topic last meeting? Very good! Now, give me thumbs up if the statements that I'll be mentioning about critical reading are true, and if not, Give me thumbs down. Ready? Okay, let's begin. First, in critical reading, the readers are trained to believe in their capacity to think beyond what a reading material offers and later cultivate this value as it engenders critical thinking. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Yes! Thumbs up! Next, the readers are challenged to reason out or to justify for their thoughts, ideas, and decisions. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Correct! Thumbs up! And for the last one, critical reading refers to a careful, active, Reflective and analytic reading. Is it right? Very good! It's thumbs up! You really paid attention to our last episode. Good job! Alright, this time, we'll see how you fared in our quiz last meeting. So check your answers honestly. Your task was to write true if the given statement is correct and false if it is not. Here are the answers. Number 1, true. Number 2, true. Number 3, false. Number 4, true. And number 5, false. How are your scores? Awesome! Those who got a perfect score, congratulations! And to others who didn't, you have more chances to catch up today in our learning adventure. Before that, let's listen first to this reminder. Stay put! Elena, Elena, have you washed your hands already? Oh yes, Karen. Me too! We need to always wash our hands with soap and water to kill germs and bacteria and to keep us away from COVID-19. You're right, Elena! Proper hand washing is a protection against COVID-19. This information is from the Department of Health, Department of Education, and this is station. We are back! Are you ready learners? 
may I hear a loud hooray from you? Yay! That's the spirit. Learners, as a critical element of literacy, reading is very essential for an individual's success. It is one of the ways that we use language in our daily life to gather information, communicate with others, and for enjoyment. Hence, reading always occurs in context. Thus, when you read and evaluate the text you are reading, it is important to produce meaningful evaluative statements. Do you know what an evaluative statement is? You are correct! An evaluative statement is given as a way of giving a better explanation to show the strengths and the weaknesses of something through writing. It also presents a value of judgment based on a set of criteria and is used in explaining a sound judgment which can be backed up or supported with valid proofs and reasons. How do you think how it is formulated? Right! Learners, the formulation of an evaluative statement is done in the same way you do in any other writings, except that the statement is about your judgment of the text's content and property. Remember that you can compose your evaluative statement by formulating meaningful assertions about the content and properties of text and counterclaims in response to claims made in a text. Now, let us discuss first assertions about the content and properties of text. What do we mean by assertion? Brilliant! An assertion is a sentence that is either true or false, and a statement or declaration made regarding an idea, a topic, or an issue which express a person's opinion, feelings, or belief. Also, it occupies a central place in expository prose. The adequacy of an assertion may depend on any numerous criteria. In other words, learners, the assertion can be classified according to the ground on how we judge them as true or false and according to the degree of certainty with which we can make that judgment. But certainty is just a matter of how we know or how we would find out whether an assertion is true or false. Remember learners, the shortest way to solve this problem is by providing evidence, and I'm sure you can do it. Did you know that there are four types of assertion? What's the first one? Correct! It is called a statement of convention or a dictionary definition. Convention is a way in which something is done, similar to traditions and norms. Conventions depend on historical precedent, laws, rules, usage, and customs. Listen to this statement. The Sampagita belongs to the genus Desminum of the family Olysia. Do you think this is an example of statement of convention? Certainly, this statement is a convention because it is based on classification system made up by scientists and is acceptable to the scientific community. Okay, let's proceed. How about the second type of assertion? That is right. We have the statement of fact which refers to the statements which can be directly verified by experience or reliable reports. It can be proven objectively by studies or reliable sources, direct experience, testimonies of witnesses, verified observations, or the results of research. Let's take this statement. 
The Sampaguitas roots are used for medicinal purposes, such as an anesthetic and sedative. Is this an example of statement of fact? That is correct! This statement is a fact because it can be directly verified by experience or reliable research reports. Alright, how about the third type of assertion? Brilliant! Yes, it is a statement of opinion or a statement that needs to be verified by technical experimentation and production study. What again is an opinion? Alright, opinions are based on facts but are difficult to objectively verify because of the uncertainty of producing satisfactory proofs of soundness. Now, the statement, the popularity of Sampaguita flowers is most evident in places of worship. Is this considered as opinion? Very good! The statement is an opinion because it is based on observation that needs to be proven by studies and repeated observation. There are too many factors involved that makes explicit judgment difficult. And our last type of assertion? Precisely! The fourth is the statement of preference. This is the preference of the person giving the statement. What then is a preference? That's right! Preferences are ideas based on personal choice. Therefore, they are subjective and cannot be objectively proven or logically attacked. The sentence some paguitas are the most beautiful and most fragrant of all flowers is an example because this statement is a preference. Is an example because this statement says a lot about the type of flowers that the writer likes instead of objectively comparing the qualities of some pagitas to that of other flowers. Are we clear on that, learners? Can you think of other examples? I know you have thought a lot of examples. You are truly amazing! At this point, let's now have counterclaims in response to claims made in a text read. But first, any idea on what a counterclaim is? Well, learners, a counterclaim is made to rebut a previous claim which provides a contrasting perspective to the main argument. It is the opposition you make about the claim of the writer. In short, a claim is the main argument and a counterclaim is the opposite of the claim or argument which provides a contrasting perspective to the main argument. Counterclaims answer the question, what are other credible possibilities? I have here other questions that will help you formulate a counterclaim. Number one, what are the major points on which you and the author can disagree? Number two, what is the strongest argument? What did they say to defend their position? Number three, what are the merits of their view? Number four. What are the weaknesses or shortcomings in their argument? Number five. Are there any hidden assumptions? And number six. Which lines from the text best support the counterclaim you have formulated? 
Did you get it, learners? Make sure that you consider those questions when you formulate a counterclaim. Alright, now I have here three steps to share on how you are going to write your counterclaim. Step 1 refers to ways on how to begin counterclaim paragraphs. Use introductory statements such as, Many people believe that It is often thought that It may seem as if And, while it is common Step 2 we have ways to transition from the opposite side back to your opinion. Use introductions such as, What this argument fails to consider is, This view sounds convincing at first, but, And, Although the core claim is valid, it suffers from the flaw in its And step 3, write a counterclaim Use one of the sentence starters in step 1 Remember to transition back to your opinion and use one of the sentences starters in step 2 Crystal clear learners? To understand fully well, I have here an example of an argument. Your task is to identify the claim and the counterclaim. Remember to take down notes, learners. Here we go! Students should not be allowed to use gadgets in school. While it is true that gadgets help students learn better, they also have negative impacts. If not used well, gadgets become a disturbance during class hours. A simple scenario is when a student opts to play an online game or browse social media account while the class is going on which might possibly affect his or her concentration on the lesson being discussed. What do you think is the claim? Certainly! The claim is, students should be allowed to use gadgets in school. How about the counterclaim? Precisely! The counterclaim is, while it is true that gadgets help students learn better, they also have negative impacts. If not used well, gadgets become a disturbance during class hours. A sample scenario is when a student opts to play an online game or browse social media account while the class is going on, which might possibly affect his or her concentration on the lesson being discussed. You are doing great, learners! May I hear a loud cheer if you are still with me? Yay! You are really so Active. Since you listened well, give yourselves a loud round of applause. <laughs> now, let's have a short recap of what we have discussed. What is an evaluative statement? You are really attentive. Evaluative statement is a way of giving a better explanation to show the strengths and weaknesses of something through writing. How about assertion? Definitely! An assertion is a sentence that is either true or false, and a statement or declaration made regarding an idea a topic or an issue which expresses a person's opinion, feelings, or belief. And lastly, what is a counterclaim? 
Correct! A counterclaim is made to rebut a previous claim which provides a contrasting perspective to the main argument. You never cease to amaze me, learners! Before we go on with today's challenge, please stay put for some reminders. Walang mangiiwan because we will be back! Ay, I still feel sleepy. Haven't you had enough sleep last night? Yes, I didn't. I slept at around 11 o'clock last night and woke up at 5 in the morning. But why? Don't you know that we, young ones, need 8 to 10 hours of sleep? Is that so? Yes, enough sleep will make us awake, alert, alive, and enthusiastic for the day. It will also make us healthier. Thank you for telling me. A reminder from the Department of Education, Department of Health, and this is station. There you go, learners! I know you are now ready to do your final activity. So, be sure you are holding your pen and paper. Let's start! For numbers 1 to 4, identify the type of assertion used in the given statements. Number 1. The Philippines is composed of 1,700 islands. I repeat, the Philippines is composed of 1,700 islands. Number 2. A tulip is the most beautiful flower. It smells sweeter than any other flower. I repeat, number 2. A tulip is the most beautiful flower. It smells sweeter than any other flower. Number 3. Advertising is a form of communication that helps to sell ideas, goods, and services. Again, advertising is a form of communication that helps to sell ideas, goods, and services. Number 4. Modern inventions are indeed great time savers. Again, modern inventions are indeed great time savers. For numbers 5 to 8, write true if the statement is correct and false if it is not. Number 5. A counterclaim is a contrasting perspective to the argument. I repeat, a counterclaim is a contrasting perspective to the argument. Number 6. Being able to make an assertion is enough to formulate counterclaims. Again, being able to make an assertion is enough to formulate counterclaims. Number 7. Analyzing an argument is important in formulating counterclaims. Again, analyzing an argument is important in formulating counterclaims. Number 8. Claim is a statement that addresses opposing viewpoints. Again, number 8. Claim is a statement that addresses opposing viewpoints. There you have it, learners! I hope you have answered the questions correctly because we will check your answers in our next episode. Hooray! Another episode is done, my dear learners! I hope you learned much today. For more exciting learning episodes, always tune in to Radio Escuela sa Isabella, your school away from school. On behalf of the whole SDO Isabella RBI production team, this is your ultimate Kashiner, your script writer and radio teacher, teacher Emma Luisa Marzan Fernando, saying, always dream big and aim high. God bless you. Stay safe. Pat 
patuloy ang buloyang edukasyon para sa ating henerasyon. Sa daan ng pagkatuto ay walang may iwan. Kaya halina sa Radyo! Radyo! Radyo Eskwela!